What's happened to the crow man, whether you come or not? Anything could have happened. He could be dead. Well, someone's alive, all right. Yeah. Knock on the door. Who's there? Identify yourselves. It's just us. Us? Who is us? Mickey and Manu. We just came to see how you were. We haven't seen you around. I haven't been around, children. Nor do I expect to be around very much in the future. Why not? Well, did you see that nasty fellow thrown out the front door just before you came in? Yeah. That was the bailiff. Mm. Ugly piece of work. He'd come to possess all my furniture. Not that there was very much left to possess. I know. Where's it all gone? Sold. All sold. Piece by piece. I needed money. It all had to go. But I'm neglecting my duties as host. Please sit down, children, while I get you some lemonade. My apologies, children. Only brown sauce. I ran out of lemonade weeks ago. I don't suppose I could tempt you to a glass of water and a brown sauce sandwich. Thank you very much. Oh dear, I forget. The water board cut me off last month. My bill was overdue. In fact, all my bills are overdue. I'm in a very bad situation. But why, Mr. Crowman? Why am I in a bad situation? I will tell you. The increasing use of modern technology has just forced me out of the market. I just cannot compete against such cheap labor. I am a craftsman, but the world doesn't want craftsmen anymore. But couldn't you make, well, just ordinary scarecrows? No, I could not. I do not make ordinary scarecrows. I make scarecrows that walk and talk. Scarecrows like Weevely Swede, Wattle Halfbrush, and Virgil Gummidge. My crowman days are finished. I've put away my tools. For good. But you can't, Mr. Crowman. You want to see something? Then look at this. One, odd debts, three hundred dollars. Two, very odd debts, one hundred dollars. Three, materials, wood, finest straw, etc., fifty dollars. Four, aspirin, about fifty dollars. Savings, nil. Total owing about five hundred dollars. I told you, children, I'm broke, skint. Oh, I know where I went wrong. Of course, I should have churned them out in their hundreds, just ordinary, cheap, run-of-the-mill scarecrows. But I was too much of a perfectionist, too much of a craftsman. I sold them for too little, and they cost too much. That was the trouble. Now, I'm just going to have to pack it in. But you can't. Who's going to look after people like Wurzel when they're in trouble? There just has to be a crow man. I've told you I'm finished. Goodbye, children. But, Mr. Crow Man... I said already goodbye. So goodbye, children. Look, unless we can find some money for the Crow Man somehow, he won't be a Crow Man at all. So? Hmm. Let's go find Wurzel. Do you think he can help? He can't hurt. Oh, yes, he can. Wurzel! Wurzel! Wurzel, you've got your head off. Put it back on. We want to talk to you. He can't hear you without his head on. We'll have to put it on for him. Give it to me. Give it to me. <coughs> Which way does it screw on? Same as Jam Jar, I think. OK. <coughs> oh, you're done, did you? Now you've done it. 
I've been trying all the morning to keep me carrot and nose out of trouble, and now you three's turned up and put me head back on. I reckon I's for it. Didn't you see the red sky this morning? That's a warning, that is. A warning to scarecrows. I reckon nothing will save poor old Wurzel now. Nothing. Wurzel, the crow man's in trouble. Trouble? There you are, you see. What did I tell you? I hope you're satisfied. But you're not in trouble, Wurzel. I ain't? No. Oh, well, that's all right, then. So why didn't you say so in the first place? It's the crow man. He's got problems. Terrible problems. Oh, sorry to hear that. He owes $500 and he can't pay. Oh, that I'm very sorry to hear. Ditches. Have you had your early morning tea in Vicky's yet? Because if you haven't, I thought perhaps we could have a nice sit down and have a chat about this. Wurzel, if the crow man doesn't get better, he won't be able to fix you up. And you won't be a scarecrow anymore. Oh, Wurzel won't be a scarecrow no more. Well, what will he be then if he ain't a scarecrow? He'll be a busted up pile of rubbish. Ooh. I don't much like the sound of that. Perhaps I could go without the early morning tea just this once, seeing as I was His Majesty the Crow Man himself, but to ask for old Wurzel's help. Old Wurzel never lets the Crow Man down. Well, hardly ever anyways. <laughs> Sometimes, perhaps. Not this time, Wurzel! Five hundred dollars! Five hundred dollars? Where's I going to get five hundred dollars? I reckon I'd better go and find the only person around here that understands money. Aunt Sally. Hmm. This is it. The end. No point in putting off the inevitable. No room for recriminations or regrets. I've only got one thing left to do, but it must be done right away. I have to wipe the slate clean. Rosemary for remembrance. Hemlock for ending. Cypress for sorrow. By storm, by tempest, and all the cold seasons, I return thee to the earth, to black ashes. One of them bringing by Sadie things. When you get hot dogs and tomato sauce and crunchy bits of chocolate fudge and waffles so big you can't wrap your gob around them. Woo! <laughs> hey, that's a meringue and an half, and no mistake. You need a whole table full of scarecrows with plenty left over for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what it tastes like. You're going to pay for that. Well, if it's all the same to you, Mrs. No. But you just stuck your finger in it. No, I never. Yes, you did. No, I never. Then how do you explain that? Hey, you got me there, Mrs. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll fix it all up so no one will know the difference. Good as new. <laughs> oh. Out of my own rubbish. Oh, corpsicle. I could do with a drop of corpsicle myself. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Can I have a cup of that there orangey juice? Well, it's 50 cents. How much is this then? It's only two cents. You need another 48. Well, I ain't got another 48. Well, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Well, if you can't help me, may as well help myself.
corsicle. Ain't nothing more refreshing. Would you ladies care for a sip? Disgusting! Well, suit yourself. Hey, hello, Aunt Sally. Hey, what for you got that ticket to thing round your neck? I should have thought that was extremely obvious, even to a glorified hay bale like you. I am selling myself for money to make myself an Aunt Sally of means. Oh. Well, what's an Aunt Sally of means, Aunt Sally? I wouldn't expect someone with a turnip impersonating a head to understand. An Aunt Sally of means, Wetzel, is a lady what lives in a huge mansion and drinks terrier water and staggers around under the enormous weight of glittering jewels. Oh. Uh, yeah, how much money do you expect to make flogging yourself off? Half a million, I shouldn't wonder. Maybe more. Maybe even 13,000. In that case, Aunt Sally, how about making a small loan to his eminence to pro man? He's a bit short of readies at the minute, and as you're planning to make such a huge amount, I thought perhaps you could spare a hundred or three. I'm giving any of my wealth to the crowman. Do you think I am a blooming charity? Yeah, but Aunt Sally's in an awful pickle at the minute. If you don't get hold of some money soon, you'll have to give up scarecrowing. Wurzel Gummidge, I ain't giving away one cent. For your information, you're scaring away my prospective customers. And if you don't push off, I shall call the manager and he will chuck you out like the bag of dead grass that you is. Aunt Sally wouldn't do that to poor old Wurzel. was only trying to help out his eminence. Push off! Aunt Sally, you don't understand. Get away! <laughs> Who did that? He did? I never! He's drunk. I too! Come here, you! Fifteen and two is um, seventeen. Minus ten for sweets is seven. And three is ten. Mickey, ten cents. That's all in this one. Where did those come from? These are my special reserve money boxes for emergencies. Like what? Midnight snacks and a new elastic for my catapult. Let's see. It's empty. So is this one. They're all empty. Well, there might have been a few more emergencies than I thought. What do we do now? We're never going to find $500. Don't ask me. What's going on here, then? Hello, Dad. Hello, Mr. Peacock. Good morning. We're just, um, counting up our savings. So I see. Quite a little stash. How much have you got? About 45 cents. Hmm. <clears throat> there you go. That makes 50. Now, don't spend it all at once. 50 cents. Me. That were a close call, no mistake. It's a good thing old Wurzel stored figgies and put a bit of a spurt on when they are stuck. Wurzel coming! I promised was it Titi Posse after me. I told him this is enough. I told him I'd be in trouble. Red sky at night, scared for us to light. Red sky in the morning, scared for us to light. Can you see him? No. dollars. Might as well be 50,000. Mr. Crowman, it's Wurzel! He's fallen down a hole. We called down, but there's no answer. And? We thought... Yes? We thought you might come and rescue him like you always do. So Wurzel Gambage has fallen down a hole. Yes. Now listen to me very carefully, children. The time has come for Wurzel Gambage to learn his final lesson and so be it. I want it made known, and as widely as possible, that I, the one and only Pacific Crowman of the Southern Cross, have ceased making or rescuing scarecrows, regardless of circumstance. So I'm 
asking you to let this old man you see before you rest out his afternoon and perhaps even the rest of his days in quietness and peace. Thank you and goodbye. Mickey? Manu? I said goodbye. I think he does. Then it's time for my secret plan. What plan? The one I've been saving up for a super emergency. Come on. Well, I'll be flop looted. I've been gonna push me Eddie. <laughs> That's a new one. What's the same place, then? Looks like some sort of dark holy. I suppose it is a dark holy. And I was falling in because of that there pesky posse. There's only one thing for it. I reckon I'll have to sit here and wait for his braveness, the crow man, to come along and extradicate poor old Wurzel from his predicament. That's what I'll do. Ooh! Ooh! ooh. Marcy McCoo, you don't look very well, do you? Haven't had your dinner yet, I suppose. It won't. If, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Skellington, I reckon while I'm waiting, I'll just go and take myself a bit of a look around. Yes. Hey, 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 don't move. Manu, is this OK? Fine. Put it on. Now, come here. Keep still. Are you sure this is a good idea? You always say that if you didn't think of it. Come on. Daylight up there. I wonder what's making that there pinging sound. It ain't daylight at all. Just, just one of them minery men with his lantern. Uh, uh, excuse me, mister, uh, but, but to get out of here, just one have to dig one's way out like what you're doing. Stand right where you is, or I'll split your head open like a rotten potato. Uh, this ain't a potato, mister. This is a turnip. Quiet, boy. Well, let's have it from you. You're a clam jumper, ain't you? Clam jumper? No, no, I, I wouldn't jump on no clam, nor on a winkle. Well, if you ain't a clam jumper, you must be one of them mine inspectors coming down to close down my mine. My, 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 my mine's inspector? No, I, I ain't one of them neither, you suspicious Well, in that case, I picks you for a thief. <sighs> now, come on, boy, own up. You comes down here to steal my nuggets. Nuggets? What's nuggets? Don't try and deny it, boy. I can, I can see it in your eyes. Go, master. Does ugly things to a man. Now, you thought you'd surprise old Arawata Bill by sneaking up behind him. Now, put your hands in the air. You're coming back to town with me, boy. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, Mr. Hiawatha Bill, sir. It's, it's me hands up higher now. They'll do, son. They'll do. Don't try and accept. Get a move. Who is it? Oh, good day, Mr. Crowman, sir. It's me, the Posty. Oh, I've got some letters for you. More bills? Oh, no, no, no. They don't look like it. Come in, then. Thanks, sir. Here we are. Thank you. Good day, Posty. Oh, good day, Mr. Crowman. Oh. So you got a bit of competition downtown. Competition? What competition are you talking about? Selling scarecrows. Someone else is selling them down at the Bring and Buy sale. <laughs> oh, nasty looking things they are and all. And expensive. You must be mistaken. I'm the only scarecrow maker in these parts. Oh, not anymore. No, someone's definitely flogging them down at the Bring and Buy. Oh, $250 a piece, I think that was. What? That's right. Charging a king's ransom. <laughs> Oh, 
children, follow me. This is not good. You have done a very foolish thing. I'm just thankful that nobody bought one of you. You didn't make a sale, did you? No, not a level. If one of you had been sold, then the first and foremost rule of sacred scarecrow law would have been broken, which is that no human being may ever take the role of a scarecrow, lest they be turned into one forever. But we didn't know that. We were just trying to earn some money. So you could pay your bills. We don't like seeing you in bed. We want you to look after your scarecrows again, especially Wurzel Gummidge. Wurzel Gummidge, yes! That was his name. Good day, Mr. Croman. Good day, officer. You know this Gummidge, Chapman? Yes, I do. Might I ask how well, sir? Well, you could say he was under my care. Under your care. That is correct. So you are legally responsible for him? In a sense, yes. What seems to be the trouble? Fifty dollars in damages, Mr. Croman, incurred in the destruction of one cake stall. If you could have it paid within the week, this lady here would be most grateful. Thank you, sir. Good day. Within the week? But that is impossible. I have no money. No money at all. I am a pauper. What about poor old Wurzel? Wurzel Gummidge. I never want to hear the name Gummidge again as long as I live. If the crow man won't help Wurzel, then who will? Nobody. <laughs> Get moving! <laughs> You for a slippery customer the first time I laid eyes on you. Shifty eyes, light fingered. I can see I'm gonna have to take measures to restrain. <laughs> what you gonna do with that rope? You ain't gonna tie me hands up, is ya? Yes. I was gonna tie your hands and your arms and your legs and every other bit of you that'll be tied down until I figures out what I was gonna do next. Mr. Grover! 